So today I'm going to be covering the Merc 50 horsepower command thrust and this has the same gear, basically lower gear unit as the 115 horsepower and 90 horsepower motors. Um, this one is a 50 horsepower 2014 model um, and this is from the online owner's manual from Mercury. Um, we're not going to be doing these in sequence, this is the annual maintenance of the 50 horsepower four stroke. Um, because these are slightly out of order so I'm going to be doing um, first doing all the checks of the engine because it's just logical we will run through the whole engine and do all the checks um, so we'll check all the mufflers boots etc etc um, and then we're gonna go through um, do the oil change and then followed by gear case lubricant we are not going to be doing the battery because you need to inspect it every time you take it out basically so um, please inspect your batteries every time you go out in the water um, and then we're going to be doing power trim fluid checking and fuel filter checks and uh, lubricating everything so so first of all, this is the engine, it's a 50 command thrust. Um, these things are your zinc anodes. Um, I've got hydro stabilizers on mine. These aren't bad. I would not have installed them. Um, but I was suffering from issues with this motor going on, basically going up the plane and these sort of they have some bad points and some good points, but overall, they seem to be okay for this application. Um, the reason I don't recommend them is you have to drill bolts through your anti-ventilation plate, basically, which is this thing. Um, and then this is basically a steering wheel. Through, um, this is basically a speed sensor. Um, in the front of this thing, I don't know if you can see it. So there's this little hole for the speed sensor. Let me put it closer and show you where it is. Put my finger on it. So here's the little hole for the speed sensor. I don't know if it's visible on camera. Um, so a little catch out here, pull it out, basically you can snap your cover up, and that snaps your cover up, so you can see it separates, it engages with this latch, um, so you can see the top motor cover engages the latch while you're removing it. We check to see if there's any damage along the sides of the cowling. Now we lift the cowling off. And that's the cowling. While you're in here, check. This is basically noise dampening foam. So as long as it's roughly okay, you can see a little bit of fraying on mine, but that's fine. Um, that's what the cow looks like. This is the emergency. If you have an emergency, you'd pull off this, engage it with the flywheel, and basically start it up manually. Um, so that's fine. The foam looks good. So we have the checklist here, which says check internal cowl reduction, sound reduction foam. Make sure the foam is intact and not damaged. So it's mostly intact and just got a little scuffs out here and a few scuffs there, but that's fine. Overall, um, just check to see if this is unblocked because this is your air intake, so air intake should be unblocked. Um, and that looks okay. I can pass my fingers through it. So overall, the cowl looks okay. So we've done this part of the checklist. Um, and then we'll basically run through the whole engine and see if the bolts are okay and the securely fastened. 
Um, so let's start from the, I guess we can start from this side. This is the right hand side from the rear of the engine. Um, so let's start with the air coming in. So the air comes in through the muffler here. Oversized muffler for the air intake. It goes through to the fuel distribution manifold, which is this one here, which I'm pointing at. And then the fuel distribution manifold has an injector on each end. And that just basically check to make sure it's tight and everything looks okay. And that passes up to the spark plugs. One, two, three, and four. And those are your four iridium tip spark plugs. So these are pretty good life. So check the wiring. Um, check to make sure there's nothing wires all intact looking good um, check to make sure so that looks okay this one looks okay this one looks okay and then finally this one looks okay so boots are secure all the spark plugs are fine fuel distribution manifold looks fine um, next to the fuel filter we'll be doing more of a test on this one but so far we can see it's not leaking or anything it's got a little bit of fuel in it, you can see that's fuel. Um, so overall it looks fine. Um, we go around the front, fuel distribution, you can see the hose. So my hose looks okay, there's no fraying on the hoses. Um, by and large model looks okay. It's a little bit dirty on the inside here, but that's fine. You can clean it out a little bit. Um, the blue wire, which is this one, you may not have in your motors because this is a Smartcraft wiring. This goes to the Smartcraft gauge up in the front and it's very, very useful. I highly recommend you buy one if you don't have it. Um, so everything looks good on this side. So let's see. So let's look up. And up here is your alternator um, with a Kevlar Kevlar dry belt and the Kevlar dry belt. Let me looks okay. Make sure you check for phrase. Alternator looks okay. Um, alternators inside here, you can see the red part of it. Um, it's an 18 amp alternator and it's got a flywheel, so everything looks good. Um, that's my oil filling port, which I will be using shortly. Um, that looks fine. This little thing with the Little arrows, that's your mechanical fuel pump. That's a backup to your electrical fuel pump. And that's due to Coast Guard requirements. Um, so that also looks fine, at least visually. And we move on to the other side. We've got these two things which are ignition coils so you can see one two three one and four ignition coils for the force basically the four cylinders of the engine it's a four cylinder engine um, moving on this little blue thing is your vapor separated tank connector and also the connector for the main fuel pump um, so um, that's engine oil, dipstick, um, that's your engine fuel, f I mean oil filter, which we have to replace, and we also have to replace the oil. Um, this thing is the vapor separator tank, and um, that houses your main uh, fuel pump. Your electrical fuel pump that is 
Um, beyond that, that is your fuel cooler. So it cools your fuel. There's a yellow thing, which is that thing there, which is a bleed out valve for your vapor separator tank. And then uh, up on top, you can see better, you can see the flywheel and the 18 amp alternator, which we've already covered. Um, wiring harnesses. Um, let's see what else is there. Um, let me climb up a little bit. And you can see the smart graph connector in the front, which is this purple thing. Um, and then all the wiring should be basically inspected, all the hoses, make sure there's no rips or tears or, you know, frayed wiring basically. So everything looks good so far anyway. That's your main, uh, basically your ECM, the pink and the white and the green mass of wiring, that's your ECM and the ECM is at the back there. The little silver object, I don't know if you can see it. Um, ECU or ECM. And uh, basically that's about it. I mean, you have your fuses here. So, which is kind of awkward to get to, but there's fuses here. And we should check the fuses at some point, but I know they're not blown. Um, so yeah, two banks of fuses, one on the other end and one on this end. And then uh, basically just your wiring, make sure it's not frayed. Um, and also the nice thing about this engine, uh, and the cool thing about the engine is that it's got like a switch here, which kind of allows you to raise the, there it is, raise the motor up and down without having to go to the front and walk around and sort of raise it. So what I will do is um, lift up the engine a little bit. There you go. 